Welcome back to another video. Now, for anybody who's actually seen my previous video about making watermelon brandy, uh, you will see that I was producing a great deal of watermelon juice, and I thought I had some sitting for a while on its own. I went out while I was trying the uh, juice extractor, and there seemed to be some bubbles forming from it. So I thought I might do a video based on whether or not wild yeast is going to be able to activate inside this and bring it through to an alcoholic content. So that'd be an interesting episode. So a lot of this is just simply the leftover uh, watermelon juice from the first video, and I'll put a link in the description below. And in that, basically, is very little pulp. But I actually did put some through with pulp and also, because I don't know where the wild yeast comes from, with also some rind as well. So I've got a good selection of all kinds of watermelon in there. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, I've got a, a specific gravity of 103, uh, it's about 5%. So um, I want to try and bump that up to 10%. So um, I'm going to put in a few ingredients. Now, first off, I've got my trust, trusty go-to um, yeast nutrient, diammonium phosphate, or DAP. So I've got around about around about a quarter of a teaspoon of that going in. And I don't know how much dextrose to put in. So I've got five heaped tablespoons, five heaped tablespoons here. So I'm gonna put that in and see if I can bump it up to around about 10%. So um, what I might do, so I might cut here and when I actually have a specific gravity, I can tell you, I'll come back and tell you how much I put in. Well, I ended up putting 20 tablespoons full of dextrose into this to bring it up to an, uh, a specific gravity of 1076, which is roughly around about a potential 10% alcohol by volume. Now that's if the wild yeast is able to come to the party and ends up doing something. Now, I don't know what to expect, I did see a few suspicious bubbles when I first tried this out before I chose not to actually do it to actually get the ordinary water, uh, the ordinary uh, watermelon uh, juice. But I did see some suspicious bubbles, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. So I'm going to put it to bed now. Uh, it's just an experiment to see if wild yeast is going to work and uh, whether or not it is, is something that could be beneficial. Um, I think science and all its wondrous glory has found alternative ways to nature to be able to do things. And I think in days gone by, while yeast was the way to do everything, they didn't have a packet of yeast from the local brew shop, did they? Well, let's see what happens. So I'm going to put it to bed. I've got a spot reserved um, just inside my bathroom. It's relatively warm most of the time. And um, we'll just see how it goes over one, two, three weeks, four weeks, one, two months, whatever, it, however long it takes before... I have a result to actually tell you whether it's good, or bad, or indifferent. So until then, see you next time. Well, time for another update. This one here, I'm not holding my fingers, or I'm not holding my breath for, because it's looking a little bit unusual. It's not bubbling anymore. It started bubbling. It's now seven days later. It looks rather unusual. I'm going to do an uncorking in front of you. I'll give you my assessment of how good it is. All right, wish me luck. Definitely a fail. <laughs> so now we know that wild yeast inside watermelon does not work. I think it was bubbling at first as part of the decomposition process. <laughs> but I do, however, have another solution. I still want to use wild yeast on watermelon to see if it works. And I'll do that after this next experiment. Now, I've been searching on the internet. I've been looking at uh, all ways of making wild yeast. And uh, there's a great deal of interest out there for it, uh, in particular for baking and, and what have you. But um, I, I found one place which actually gave me a very good idea. Now, they said to use three tablespoons full of raisins, dried fruit. All right, so I'm going to put three tablespoons of raisins in there. And a quarter of a teaspoon of sugar. That's done. And that's all I need to do. Now I'll give it a bit of a shake up. That's good. 
All right, now I'm going to put that in the cupboard. I'm going to check it once or twice a day uh, and open it up and burp it a couple of times and hopefully it's going to give me an active wild yeast. I'll let you know how I go. After a couple of days, the raisins had all swelled and started to actually produce a few little bubbles attached to the outside. Now this obviously is one of the reasons why they actually uh, floated up to the surface. Those bubbles is the production of carbon dioxide. It's actually the yeast starting to work on the external part of the raisin in association with the, the uh, sugar water that was put in, uh, the sugar that was put into the water. Keep in mind too, there's a huge amount of uh, sugar on the inside of the raisins, but I had not penetrated the external skin of that. So this is basically a little bit of raisin flavoring on the sugar water that was actually inside. Now, here's a bit of a, um, a spoiler alert. Uh, this is a, a sample of the uh, second batch of watermelon wine that I made. And uh, I've got glucose in here. It brings it up to around about 15% alcohol by volume potential. Now, this is um, what I'm starting off with. So I've got my benchmarks. I know where I'm starting at 15% ABV potential. And at the end, well, we'll find out otherwise. Now, we've got um, here a sample of the... Well, not a sample, but uh, we're just draining the raisins and the, the uh, yeast water uh, from each other so that I can actually then get that uh, raisin water or a raisin yeast water and put it into uh, the top part of the uh, the glass carboy I've got there but um, you'll notice that I've actually got a couple of of heater bands that's actually one heater band uh, largely wrapped around twice around there because it's starting to get a little bit cold where I am um, when I put it to bed I'll put it to bed in a little setup like as you can see in this photo here, on this, this movie. I've got a uh, voltage regulator regulating the voltage going to uh, the heating element because basically if I just put it, plug it straight into the wall, it'll be too hot. Next thing you know, I'd be cooking. So I regulated the temperature by controlling the voltage down to where the temperature was happy. Now this movie that you can look at right now shows you that uh, the voltage regulator is just simply jumping backwards and forwards around about the voltage that was actually set. I just simply set it and forget it and uh, kept on, it just kept on doing its thing. Even though it was a slow progressive uh, yield, it did its own thing. Now if you look carefully, you'll be able to see a constant stream of bubbles all rising completely around this glass carboy up to the surface showing that there is a constant activity of yeast. It's a lovely yeast colony being created, more than comfortably looking after um, this, this brew. So it's actually quite impressive to see. All of that basically came from just a little bit of raisin water. Now I've actually got um, a close up of some of the bubbling activity as it gets closer to the top of the jar here. So you can see it's still quite intense. It's uh, very active and very happy, but it was just slow. So I think you can't rush nice things, can you? So it just has to take its time. Well, the conclusion to this experiment has been quite some time coming. Um, since originally starting uh, this wild yeast experiment on the 11th of April, today is the uh, 30th of May, that's a total of 49 days. It's taken me to come to this stage, draw a conclusion and to what's happening. As you've already seen, we had a fail in the middle of it, but uh, the second round came out pr pretty good. Uh, I'm very pleased with the second round. So I've already done a specific gravity on the second one. Um, it started off at uh, 1.112 or about 15% potential ABV. It ended up at... Um, um, what have we got here? A specific gravity of 1.042, which is a 5.5 potential ABV. So realistically, this came out at 9.5 potential ABV. So this is going to be 9.5%. So that'd be good. Um, rather pleased with that. Yes, it does work. Wild yeast does work, but it's extremely slow. And um, that means to say I'm not going to be doing this in a hurry via wild yeast again. I'll be using something more practical and uh, more uh, up-to-date and modern and fast. 
Um, but um, I'm rather pleased with that. So um, uh, potential 9.5% ABV. Uh, that's when uh, it actually didn't use all of its sugar up. Now, um, the wild yeast had a low alcohol tolerance. So the wild yeast died. It completely stagnated uh, around about 9.5%. Uh, well, sorry, let me rephrase that. It completely stagnated at 5.5% potential alcohol volume. So um, it's slightly sweet. And that leads me to the next step. I'm going to give it a bit of a taste. Um, I, I'm expecting it to be sweet. Strong alcohol flavour, a strong alcohol taste. And um, I'm not sure about the taste of the uh, watermelon yet, so we'll try that. Just a little bit on a teaspoon. It's, yes, it's, it's sweet. A slight tang to it. Doesn't taste like watermelon, but then again, I'm re I'm relating this to uh, when I bite into a slice of watermelon. It doesn't taste like that, but it does taste interesting. Yes, I'm not too sure I'm making watermelon wine, but I think it might be an interesting flavour. Um, but all in all, the experiment the experiment was a success, albeit second time round, and um, that's interesting that's really really good so now to end this project off um, next week I'm hoping to do part two of my watermelon brandy so what I'll do is I'll include this in the other watermelon brandy um, mixture and I'll distill that with the watermelon brandy but uh, all in all an interesting experiment wild yeast is very viable um, I didn't like the idea of um, experimenting further with this. I did have an idea. I, I crossed my mind and I, th I thought to myself, what if I try different types of stone fruit and different types of wild yeast? But no, <laughs> I haven't got that amount of time left. At 49 days to do one, I'm not going to do multiple. <laughs> so all in all, it's been a very interesting journey to do this wild yeast experiment. Hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed putting it together for you. Now, it, obviously, it's taken quite a bit of time to do this. So I'll put a lot of effort into doing this. If you do like it, please like, subscribe and share. It does help out immensely as far as YouTube giving me a little bit more recognition uh, to actually show my videos to more people around the world. So, yeah, um, great news. Success. Hope you've enjoyed it. See you in the next video.